Today, we're talking about the AMD Threadripper Pro 7995WX, a 96-core CPU with 192 threads. Since I started 3D rendering, I've been using the Corona Renderer. This is a CPU-based renderer that utilizes only the processor's power to render or calculate images, as one might call it. I began with the 16-core Ryzen 5950X and then upgraded to the 64-core Threadripper 3990X. Now I have the 96-core Threadripper Pro 7995WX in my system. In this video, I want to highlight the advantages of switching from 64 cores to 96 cores because, for me, there are no downsides to this upgrade. Not even in terms of price, but we'll get to that later. Essentially, this time I wanted to build a system that excels not only in hardware but also in cooling. This allows us to see the maximum potential of this CPU for everyday use. This means good core to watt performance and in general what I could squeeze out of the system. I test this in Cinebench R23 and crucially, in my case, in the Corona Benchmark 10. In this system there are three radiators. Two thick 360 radiators with push and pull configurations and one thin 360 radiator with only push configuration. I ensure that the CPU can be cooled down to the maximum and there is enough radiator surface area to dissipate the heat accordingly. Two 140mm fans are installed on the side, pushing cold air into the system. In total, there are 17 fans. The system also includes 128GB of ECC RAM with 4800MHz speed and a water-cooled graphics card. Regarding the AMD Threadripper Pro, it's worth noting that it's the first time you can overclock the Pro CPUs from the start, with AMD providing the necessary hardware support. It's also the first time you can install a Threadripper Pro CPU on a HeadyT mainboard, eliminating the need for a specific workstation board. For me, this is the ideal scenario. I could easily place the CPU on the Asus Pro WS TRX50 Sage Wi-Fi, which is a heady T mainboard, and also supports the regular new Threadripper 7000 series. The combination has only two drawbacks. One, it has limitations on the maximum RAM you can use, and two, it has limitations on the maximum PCIe lanes. However, since I don't utilize these to the fullest, and I prioritize the maximum cores of the CPU, it works for me. As with previous Threadripper series, I am absolutely impressed by the quality of the CPU and the identical installation compared to previous Threadripper series. It's important to note that I could simply use my water block for the CPU from the TRX40 base on the new TRX50 base as the socket points remained identical, a fantastic feature. Of course, you can't avoid getting a new mainboard, but at least having the flexibility here is great. Ever since I can remember, I've been using Be Quiet power supplies and have never been disappointed. That's precisely why it was important for me to also rely on them for this setup, so I'm using the Be Quiet Dark Power Pro 13 with 1600 watt. It offers 80 plus titanium efficiency, as well as world class performance, and has reliably powered my system. In the non overclocked state, I scored about 117,000 points in Cinebench R23. Initially, I tested whether I could break the world record with normal water cooling, which I have installed. At the time of the test, the record was around 146,000 points. I managed to break it with about 154,000 points. This was achieved at 465 gigahertz on all 96 cores with a power consumption of about 800 watts. Since these settings are not suitable for everyday use, and I don't want to run the board at full load all the time, I lowered it to a healthier core to watt ratio and tested the system at 4.4 gigahertz. There I landed at 145,000 points with about 500 watts, which is acceptable for me. I have been able to um, work absolutely stably with this setup for over three months without any problems. Since in my case, the CPU is not only used for short tests like in Cinebench R23 or the Corona Benchmark, but also runs under full load for several hours. 
I can definitely say that it handles 4.4 GHz all-core without any problems. The Asus motherboard, with its 36 power stages, is oversized and can fully keep up. In the Corona benchmark, I also claimed the first place with the maximum clock speed of 4.65 GHz, achieving 41.9 million rays per second. This is almost double the performance compared to my also overclocked 64-core Threadripper 3990X, which reached 23.6 million rays per second. It's important to note that the 64-core Threadripper also ran at 500-600 watts of power consumption. What does this mean for me in conclusion? Ultimately, everything. In my profession, time is money, and now I can render twice as fast, saving me double the time. In the same amount of time, I can now get twice as much done, and it also gives me the ability to see details faster in interactive mode, controlling materials and models more quickly and precisely. For me, this justifies the price point of approximately 10,300 euro as per time of recording. This is an investment that pays off over time. Please remember, this is a processor for professionals and not a consumer CPU. Especially if you use applications where CPU performance is extremely important, I can highly recommend the Threadripper Pro and the regular Threadripper CPUs. There is simply nothing better on the market and with the Threadripper 7000 series, AMD has also listened closely to the community. I am very happy with the results as they significantly impact my daily life. If you have any questions about the Threadripper Pro and Threadripper series, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. You can also send me a DM on Instagram. In this sense, I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, a big thank you to AMD for this major step compared to the previous Threadripper series. Until then, peace out.